So the Ultra Studio Pro is a product that's been introduced to NAB 2010 um, with, a, with a bit of a different twist. I mean, a lot of focus this year has been based on 3D. However, what we've seen is that with a product, um, the product that we've been missing within our range is an external capture device. Um, there are many other on the markets which include like Firewire and PCI Express slots. But what this one does is it actually uses a brand new technology which is just becoming available to the industry as we speak. Um, USB 3 is going to be a standard that's really going to be hitting our, our desktop computers and our laptops in the next six to eight months. Currently there, there's actually two um, USB 3, uh, two or three different manufacturers who are actually doing USB 3. Um, main benefits are you can now do 4.8 gig um, bandwidth as opposed to um, like 400 megs, which is almost 10 times more um, than the actual bandwidth of USB 2. So kind of the product is, is, is relatively simple because it's taken our DeckLink um, technology, um, but all we're doing is we're actually encasing it now in an external box. So this, um, this beautiful looking device here, which is, uh, which is got a silver plate, it's got nice feet, cables managed beautifully down the back, has um, three SDI on the back, it has HDMI, um, it also has HD component, it has all the analog SD connections on there as well, um, and it retails at 895. Um, so, so essentially this basically does everything that you need, um, an external device connecting to your computer by USB 3 for $895. Now, uh, I'm going to ask you a really silly question. Is that the actual device or is that connected to the device? No, this is actually the device. So what you're actually seeing here is, is a fully working device which is playing, um, playing into a system full uncompressed HD video. So you're using the back of the device essentially to display level meters. Exactly. But the well, card is embedded in the behind it essentially? Yeah, so the card actually lives behind. Nobody wants to see the connections. Nobody wants to see the brackets of, of things being connected into it. What we want to see is, is something that looks great on our desktop. We want to see something that you know, we're pleased to look at by the side of our monitor. And what, we've, what we very strongly believe in is the aesthetics of something has to look nice not, and also be functional at the same time. So what we try to do is we try to make all our products look beautiful. And I'd probably say that out of all the products that we've manufactured, this is probably the one we're most proud of. And so right now it's a single USB 3 cable that connects that to your computer? Yeah, that's correct. Um, a single USB 3 cable directly into um, the USB 3 slot, um, in this case on a HP, uh, HP laptop. So speaking of that, what currently supports a USB 3? Obviously no Mac products. That's correct. I mean, we're expecting that this really is going to take off, like I said, between, in the next six to eight months. Um, so we're expecting that Apple to get on the uptake, hopefully, before the end of the year. Um, in the meantime, there is plenty of PC products out there which are, um, are really starting to embrace the USB 3 technology. There's also, if you go around NAB, some storage companies which are also working with USB 3. Um, but, I've, but I believe that we're the only manufacturer at the moment for capture card devices that's really pushing this new technology. The Intensity Shuttle Box is a new capture device which has been developed by Blackmagic Design um, based upon the USB 3 technology that we talked about before. Um, essentially, this is uh, similar using the same, the same type of technology in the Ultra Studio Pro, um, except this doesn't have SDI connectivity on it. This is meant more for the guys who are using HD component, um, using HDMI, and also using SD, um, SD uh, connections into this unit. Um, the great benefit of this is it's small, it's um, very neat, very, uh, very good looking unit. Um, the USB 3 um, actually carries the power of the unit, so it means that it doesn't need to be externally powered, um, which is a real benefit to a user because it means now you can go into the field with your laptop, you can, um, you can actually power the unit directly from a laptop, um, which means it really is the first remote um, external um, capture and playback device on the market. In September last year, um, Blackmagic Design actually made an acquisition for DaVinci Systems. Um, DaVinci is the number one color correction company in the industry. Um, traditionally, traditionally thought as, as, as dealing with high-end posts, so working with 2K film, 4K film, and also 3D, such as the films like Avatar. Um, what we actually did was, um, we, over the last eight months since acquiring DaVinci, we've actually been spending a lot of money and a lot of time on redeveloping it to work on, um, work on the Mac platform. This doesn't mean that we've given up on the Linux. All it means is that we've now actually got a Mac platform system which works on a one GPU um, machine, um, which means it makes it more affordable for the average guy who wants to color grade. Um, this system, the only limitation of this system is that it will actually 
work on a one GPU machine, which means it's not scalable beyond that. But that said, we've seen performances of like six or seven uncompressed HD files um, with secondary color correction, um, with blurs, with defocuses, um, with, uh, with zooms and pans and tilts. So essentially, this is a, this is a fully working um, resolve um, piece of software, um, no different than the Linux version, except it's not scalable beyond one GPU. So what is an example of a workflow? Uh, how do you get in and out of the Resolve system? The Resolve system is essentially is a process that takes place after the edit. Um, so what would happen is that your guy um, would be working in Final Cut Pro or he'd be working in another NLE. Um, he would essentially then complete his edit. He would then export that sequence either as a QuickTime or as a DPX sequence. Um, the Resolve system then enables you to import that DPX, those DPX files and an EDL into the system and, and then start the color correction process. Now when people talk about color correction, they say, well, what is it? Well, color correction is in, is in essence the ability to be able to give that film the look that you want, to, you want to really make it stand out. So for instance, good examples are things like Avatar, where they wanted the colors very, very rich. Um, so what they do is they enhance the, the primary colors, they enhance the secondary colors, so they might make things green and they might make things more blue. Um, they might slightly defocus things to make them look uh, less sharp. Um, so this process is really the final touching um, in, uh, in, in the post-production process. Once you finish that, that then comes back out again to tape um, or out as a file format um, for then essentially for distribution or play out. So you, could you, for example, in Final Cut export an XML and then relink to the original QuickTimes? Or Okay. Or is it EDL only? Yeah, currently it doesn't doesn't support XML, but that's um, not to say that it never will. Um, this has been eight months in the making to get it to the stage of where it is today. Um, we've, like I said before, we've invested a huge amount of time and effort and resource into the DaVinci, into the DaVinci products, which means that this is only going to grow further and further um, in the in the forthcoming months and years. Um, XML will will hopefully be in this um, in a short a short period of time. Um, however, today you would import an EDL, um, and then you would obviously work with the clips that you've then captured into the system um, to enable you to perform that color restoration and color grading. Now, what about support for, let's say, the RED camera? Is there any kind of way to bring in RED RAW? Uh, do you support the RED SDK? Yeah, basically, this is one of the best solutions for RED. This will support all of the RED formats. Um, is the workflow is is excellent. Um, however, that's really more um, really more based on the Linux system, which is a higher end system. Um, the amount of information in a RED file um, and the detail within a RED file means that you're actually working with higher resolution clips. Um, therefore, what a single GPU system could work with it in um, in, in a non um, an unreal time um, environment, but really when you're doing this you want to be working real time uncompressed. Um, so therefore you'd be looking at the Linux system which is a which is a, which is a more powerful system with multiple GPUs really to, to perform that. Resize the image. I can pan it, tilt it and rotate and then I can hit play and it will play in real time. So I don't have to wait for anything to happen. So is this the single uh, single GPU version we're using right now? This is uh, yes, this is the Mac version. So all of these elements are happening in real time. Now, the, what, what's the, the maximum raster size that you can actually do this in? Is it uh, 1080p? In, in in 2K. In 2K. So it will work in 2K. It's basically the higher the size, the lower the performance in playback and render. Okay. So it's a bit of a payoff between the, how much performance you need, depending obviously what work you're doing, and how many clients you have in the room. And we were talking about earlier about perhaps using the Linux system for RED files. Are you even able to play RED files, be it can, not real time? You can play RED files on the Mac system, yes. And uh, you're you, playing them from the RAW? Playing them from the RAW. So in this sequence here, I have a nested sequence of DPX, but I have one RED sequence here. Now I can actually go in and change the codec values here, and we're at quarter res good. I can actually get this to half res good, okay. I also have color controls for the new red color science, so the new color space settings I can change in here. So you do individual. have access to the red SDK? I do, SDK. So here you can see if I just want to change the red of that file, I will just change here. And I can see that updating there in real time. So when I'm happy, I'm now working with red color here and red log. I can then, with some color corrections here, hit play on this shot. And that's there playing just 24 frames. So that's just, just oh, it's real time now. 
Okay, so less less processing than a DPX, but still and like two or three levels of color correction. Would you like to say hello to the listeners of Tech Media hey, Planet? Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to NFA 2010. Fantastic. You always have great things to show. I have to say, we were here last year and were blown away by the just the oh, cool. sheer Thanks. amount of offerings. And yeah, my, I, I think my theory is as we get bigger, we should do more stuff. Otherwise, it's like people are going to go, well, what are you doing? Getting more fat and lazy. Come on, do more. You know. So I've always kind of feel weird that if we don't do more as we get bigger, then we don't feel like we're pulling our weight. So we're kind of rushed. And plus, we've got so many ideas, we just want to go faster. So right. I'm always thinking about how can we do all these things simultaneously because there's so many things to do, you know?